In this video, we'll see how to stream or screen record your DAW for free using VoiceMeter Potato and OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. You'll be able to route your DAW audio into OBS, including the audio from plugins, and you'll be able to use the inputs of your audio interface. We'll go step by step from start to finish. If you prefer text instructions, you can read the full article at BenoniStudio.com. There is also time code for each section in the description below. Head to this site to download VoiceMeter Potato for free. Be sure to donate if you find this program useful. Now, if you don't have it, download OBS Studio. This program is also totally free. You can also download Streamlabs OBS. I'll be using OBS Studio for this video, but everything I show you applies to Streamlabs. Personally, I use both of these programs. I use OBS Studio when I want to record and Streamlabs OBS when I want to stream. I always recommend people start with OBS Studio to learn the basics and then integrate Streamlabs if they have a use for its features. Install all the software and restart the computer. Open VoiceMeter Potato and set a hardware output for A1. This is so we can hear audio. Set an ASIO device for the A1 output. You will hear audio from this device when you activate the A1 button on a track. You can set other output sources from A2 to A5. For example, you may want to hear audio from your computer speakers, so set that on A2, for example. Most of the time you'll try the WDM driver first, but I found that for my system the MME driver works better. You'll have to experiment with your specific system and devices. Next, set the playback device for Windows. Left click the speaker icon in the tray and select Voice Meter Input. VAIO. Playback a media source on your computer. I'll play this YouTube video and you'll see the input in Voice Meter. Activate an output to hear the audio from the device you prefer. If I select A1, I'll hear the audio from headphones or speakers connected to my audio interface. If I select A2, I'll hear the audio from my computer speakers, or even do both at the same time. Open OBS Studio and create a display capture. If you have more than one monitor connected, select the one you wish to capture. Make sure you capture the cursor if you are doing tutorial videos. Click the gear icon for the desktop audio track and select Properties. Make sure this is set to Default. Default refers to the playback device for Windows. Playback some media on your computer. I'll play this video in VLC Media Player. You can see the audio input into OBS. Before we connect VoiceMeter Potato to our DAW, we'll check out the video and audio settings I use in OBS or Streamlabs. If you are already familiar with OBS, feel free to skip this part. Go to Settings and Output. Change the mode to Advanced. On the Streaming tab, set the audio track to 1. In general, when streaming, you can only transmit one stereo audio track. Your encoding options will depend on your hardware so you'll have to see what works best for you. If you want to stream in a lower resolution, you can rescale here. I set my rate control to constant bitrate, but you can try others. And the bitrate will depend on your internet upload speed. So do a test stream and adjust. You can play around with these other settings as well. Under the recording tab, you can change the path the video will be recorded to. And by the way, streaming and recording are independent. You can just stream, just record, or stream and record at the same time. For recording format, in general, set it to MP4 or MOV. You could use other formats if you wish. I usually use MOV since I edit the footage in Media Composer. We'll come back to the audio track settings later. Your encoder settings will depend on your system. I prefer the NVIDIA option, but you'll have to test what works on your system. Usually, you won't want to rescale the output, so leave that unchecked. I set my rate control to constant bitrate, and the bitrate setting can be between 1000 and 10,000. Usually around 7000 will be more than enough to have the highest quality and moderate file size. If you are recording with 60 frames per second and you don't mind big files, you can jack this up to 20,000 to 70,000, though you won't notice much if any improvements in general. You'll have to test this for yourself. 
start with 5,000 and work your way up. For preset, I use quality or max quality. Profile is high. GPU is zero. If you have multiple GPUs, you can switch that here. Zero is the first GPU. One is the second, etc. Max B frames is two. Under the audio tab, set everything to the highest setting. Apply your changes. Click audio on the sidebar. Change the sample rate to 48K. 48K is the standard for video sound. If you have problems with 48K, right click the speaker icon in Windows and choose sounds. Under the playback tab, find the devices you are using and choose properties. Under the advanced tab, make sure the device is set to 48K. Do this for each device. Then go to the recording tab and do the same for each device you want to use. Back in OBS, set your channels to stereo. You can mess with these other settings once you're more familiar with OBS. Just make sure desktop audio is set to default. Apply your changes. Click video in the sidebar. Usually you won't need to change the first three settings. For frames per second, choose common FPS. From the dropdown, choose either 30, 48, or 60. In general, 30 frames per second is what you will choose and is more than enough for tutorial videos. If you choose 48 or 60, the demand on your computer will be higher and your video file will also usually be larger. Most videos you see on YouTube are between 24 and 30 frames per second. The video you're watching now is 60 frames per second. Choose whichever you prefer and apply your settings. Click advanced in the sidebar. You probably won't need to change any of these settings, but here's what I use. Process priority is normal. Renderer is direct 3D. Color format is NV12. Color space is 709. Color range is full. If your video looks too dark or the colors are wrong, change this to partial. Apply your settings and click OK. If you want to record a webcam at the same time, create a video capture device in OBS and select your webcam. Then place it where you want. If you're sitting in front of a green screen, right click the webcam source and choose filters. Under effect filters, add a chroma key and adjust your settings. If you're streaming, head to settings, stream, and set up your account for the service you want to use. Again, I usually use Streamlabs for streaming and everything I've shown you in OBS applies to Streamlabs. So be sure to adjust your settings in Streamlabs if the defaults are not working. If you only have one computer monitor, be sure to minimize OBS after you start recording. You can always access it from the taskbar or the tray. You can even set up keyboard shortcuts to start or stop recording. OBS Studio is now set up and ready to record or stream. Open your DAW. We already have a 48K session open in Pro Tools. We need to connect our DAW to Voice Meter. In Pro Tools, go to Setup, Playback Engine, and select Voice Meter AUX Virtual ASIO. I'll assume you know how to change the playback engine for your DAW. You may need to default the I.O. if it's not correct for your tracks. In Pro Tools, we go to Setup, I.O., and click Default for the Input, Output, and Bus tabs. Playback some audio or a virtual instrument in your DAW. You'll now see the input in Voice Meter. To hear the audio from your DAW, activate one or more of the hardware outputs we set up earlier. This audio includes everything that's going on inside your DAW, including any plugins or virtual instruments. If you're not planning on using the inputs of your audio interface, we can go ahead and send this audio into OBS. In OBS, create an audio input capture. Name it DAW Audio. From the dropdown, choose Voice Meter Aux Output. Playback audio in your DAW. You won't see any input yet in OBS. Bring up Voice Meter and activate B2 under Voice Meter Aux. Now you'll see your DAW audio in OBS. If you intend on using the inputs of your audio interface, 
we'll have to change some settings. Otherwise, you'll get a feedback loop. Let's delete the DAW audio track in OBS and deactivate B2 in Voice Meter. Go to Menu and System Settings slash Options in Voice Meter. Look for Patch ASIO Inputs to Strips. Since for this example, we want to use a microphone and a guitar run through Pro Tools, we'll switch in one to one with nothing for the right stereo channel. And for in two, we'll select two for the right and nothing for the left side. You could set one and two for input one, but we have more options this way. For our example, set the rest of these to nothing. Make sure nothing is selected for hardware inputs one and two. Remove the device if something is already set. Once removed, the input will default to the ASIO inputs we just set up. Make sure nothing is selected for channels three through five. I'll plug in a microphone to input one and a guitar to input two. In your DAW, create two mono audio tracks. Set the input of the mic track to VMVAIO1 and the input of the guitar track to VMVAIO2. Input monitor the mic track. You won't see anything yet. In voice meter, send the mic track to B2. We'll also send the guitar track to B2. Input monitor the mic track in Pro Tools and you'll see the input. Because we want to monitor the microphone through Pro Tools, do not activate any hardware outputs for the mic track or guitar track in voice meter. Instead, monitor through the DAW track, which is again, voice meter aux. Add any plugins you wish to the mic track to use them in real time. I'll also add a guitar amp plugin to the guitar track. Since we're monitoring through the DAW, make sure your buffer is as low as it can be without introducing problems. In OBS Studio, create an audio input capture. Name it DAW Audio. Set the input to Voice Meter VAIO3 output. In Voice Meter, send the DAW audio track to B3. You now have the DAW audio stream in OBS, and it's separate from the desktop stream. Now you can play back audio in your DAW use virtual instruments, use plugins, use the mic and guitar, and even record in your DAW. And everything that happens in your DAW will be captured in OBS. If you want to use a separate microphone for voiceover purposes that's not affected by the plugins on the mic track, you have a few options. You could run a mic through voice meter or even use a USB mic but we're going to use another mic plugged into our audio interface and route it directly into OBS. I have the Shure SM7B plugged into input three of our audio interface. In OBS, create an audio input capture. Name it microphone. Set the input in our case to three, four. You can now see the input. Click the gear and choose advanced audio properties. If you are streaming, then you'll probably want to collapse this to mono. If you are recording, then it doesn't matter. If it's set to mono, the track looks like this. If it's not set to mono, the track looks like this. Just split this track to mono, center it, and delete the unused side. If you want to place VST effects on the microphone track, click the gear icon and choose filters. Choose any of the included effects or even VST plugins you have installed on your system. Keep in mind, these effects will be recorded in the mic stream, so don't use them if you're going to edit later, but they can be useful for streaming. To hear the effect on your microphone, click the gear icon and go to advanced audio properties. For now, downmix the mic to mono and monitor only the output. In voice meter, Activate A1 for the desktop audio track. Never mind the latency you hear. This is only for adjusting the plugin. We'll be using the direct monitor to hear our microphone when streaming or recording. Once you are happy with the sound, close the plugin and turn the monitor off. Untick mono if you wish. 
If you want to record the audio in OBS to different tracks to edit later, you need to set that up. First, click the gear icon next to an audio track and choose Advanced Audio Properties. Under Tracks, untick everything for now. If you are streaming, you want everything going out of one. This is because most streams only accept a single stereo track. You could also select one for everything if you want a stereo mix of all your audio tracks. That track would look like this in a video editor. This is a combination of desktop audio, Pro Tools, and the mic. If you are streaming and recording at the same time, and you want separate tracks to edit later, set each track to one, and then separate outputs for each track. The audio tracks from the recorded video would look like this in a DAW, or this in an NLE. You can then edit these tracks individually in post. If you are only recording and you don't want a stereo mix, just set a different audio track for each source. You can then edit these tracks later in your DAW or video editor. Before hitting record, we need to make sure we are actually recording the individual audio tracks. Click Settings and go to Output. Go to the Recording tab and make sure you check the audio tracks you want recorded with the video. Since we are recording on the first three tracks, I'll make sure one, two, and three are checked in this case. These boxes must be checked to record individual tracks. Even if you have the tracks checked in advanced audio properties, they will not be recorded unless you check them in the recording tab. Make sure you hit apply. Now you are ready to stream or record with OBS Studio. After recording, you may want to edit your footage. You can of course use your favorite video editor for that, but if you don't have an NLE, I've included links to free video editors in the description below. Everything I've showed in this video also applies to Streamlabs OBS. The interface is a bit different, but it can be set up the same way. Try Streamlabs after getting familiar with OBS Studio. And that's it. There's a lot more you can do with VoiceMeter and OBS, but now you can make tutorials and demos about a DAW or plugins, stream a guitar performance live or a vocal performance live or a piano performance live, podcast from your studio, and anything else you can think of. Screencast your DAW for free without limits by using VoiceMeter Potato and OBS Studio or Streamlabs.